Hello everyone, and firstly, we'd like to give a huge welcome to our new subscribers and the enormous number of you who have left us some amazing comments over the last few days. We do read them all and we reply when we can. It's just taking us a little while to catch up at the moment. So for those of you who've recently joined us on our channel, who've subscribed, ding the ding dong and all that stuff, who are we? Well, I'm Mark and I'm a full-time mastering engineer. And I'm James and we're business partners running a commercial studio just north of London, England. England and this is a slightly odd edit compared to our usual chummery as we're socially distancing at work. Have you got any chewing gum? Uh, yeah, hold on. Thanks. We started this YouTube channel back in March for two reasons. Firstly, to give us something to get our teeth into during the first round of UK lockdown. And secondly, to give you guys and girls some hopefully valuable content to help improve your creativity uh, and to give some genuinely impartial reviews. Everything we've reviewed so far on this channel, including the new Mac Mini, we bought ourselves specifically for the videos and aren't sponsored by anyone. So we've got a whole host of videos planned for the next couple of weeks, including a few more on this new Mac Mini, such as a specific video on running Ableton in its currently non-supported form, and who wants to find out how the audio output performs on this compared with budget, mid-range and high-end interfaces. Me, me, I do. Me. And for the videos we've been producing using the M1 for video editing, we've learned a lot and had some insightful input from some Netflix level video editors, as well as reaching out to Blackmagic Design for their definitive answer on working with RAW. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and ding the ding dong to be notified of those videos. I'm really looking forward to that and testing the audio output on the new Mac. Yeah, me too. So we'll also be cracking out our regular content as well, including the LA2A shootout, which has been a nightmare to produce. But whilst we don't want this to become the Mac M1 channel, we really have been blown away by this thing and we really want to know if it's a viable option for musicians and creatives right now. For those just starting out in making music, I think it's an absolute no-brainer. If you're not tied into existing hardware and can use Apple's own software, we really think the new Mac Mini is the best value entry-level Mac ever. But how does it perform when running non-native software and plugins that aren't supported yet? Well, that's what we're going to find out in this video. Let's do it. So I've loaded up uh, PreSonus Studio One, which currently isn't supported, and I've used a slightly older version than the current one for two reasons. Uh, one is because that definitely isn't supported, and two, because I haven't got a license for five, and it seems to have gone very complicated with subscriptions and loads of other crap that I don't want to know about. So uh, Studio One Four it is, and it's not supposed to work, but it does. If I play some audio, let's hit the space bar, see what happens. It plays. So we're using um, entirely Studio One native plugins here, um, which again shouldn't really work very well because it's not supported at the moment. Um, but it is, it's playing. Now it's a bit, it's not laggy in terms of performance, but the graphics aren't quite, you can see. When we play it, you can see the meters aren't responding in quite the snappy way we're kind of used to them responding, but everything works. The audio works, the automation works. If you adjust the plugin, it works. So that's good, yeah? Uh, again, not, you know, it kind of feels like we're running on a 10 year old computer rather than a brand new one, but it does work. Uh, so let's try some third party plugins and see what happens. Let's just scroll down to the drums. There, now let's load up, what should we go for? Let's go for something from Slate because that's quite a common one. So Slate Digital will go for a V, uh, the virtual mix rec. Hey, there we go. So it's loaded, uh, but hang on. <laughs> Whoa, so let's, that's interesting. Okay, so Slate plugins, as we thought, currently don't work on the uh, new Apple M1 processor, certainly in Studio One. Uh, so I'm not, let's see if it will play out of interest. 
Yes, it does. And we get nice flashing VU meters and loads of other things. So I think it's fairly safe to say uh, we can rule out putting any slate plugins on our mix bus at the moment. Okay, let's go to the main output and let's load up ozone because ozone's quite processor intensive um which is fine you never really need to be able to load many more than one instances of ozone unless you're doing something a bit weird right okay so again ozone at the moment isotope have said on their website that this currently isn't supported weight support will be coming but it's not expected to work on the on either the operating system uh massive smurf or uh, the hardware at the moment. So that's fair enough. Thanks for letting us know. Uh, however, it it does work. Again, it's very laggy. It's the graphics are appalling. Uh, Maximizers, yeah. The, I mean, it's a it's a oh Christ. It's <laughs> okay. So it's what can only be described as an awful user experience, <laughs> but it does work. So let's get rid of that. Now, lots of people have asked us to try different you know, plugins from Waves and Universal Audio and try this and try Serum and try that. Uh, we're not absolutely loaded, so we can't buy every single plugin in the world just to tell you whether it works or, or you know, spec out a system the same as yours. Um, so, but the, we've thought of a way around that. So stay tuned till the end of this video because we have thought of a way around that. Uh, right, so Studio One works. If you keep to the Studio One plugins, it kind of works. It kind of works fine. If you load Slate plugins, you've got no chance. Um, <clears throat> Ozone works, but it's not, you know, you'd, you'd be better off sticking with your old machine at the moment, which is kind of what we expected, but it does work. So what I've done now is I've loaded the same project in Logic, and I've tried to mix it as close as I can to the Studio One version, and this is what I've spent my day off doing, just for you people. So I hope you appreciate it. It's literally taken me ages to do this, but I've tried to get the Logic Mix as close as I can to the Studio One Mix, at the moment, just using Logic's native plugins. So we can see if we hit the space bar, the performance we expected in Logic Pro with Logic's native plugins, it's running like a dream. The CPU is barely even awake. Um, and it's, you know, it's not a small project. We've, we've got a fair number of channels going on here. How many channels have we got all together? We've got 32 audio channels going on. There's at least one plugin on most of them um, and two or three, we've got compressors, EQ, so nothing too demanding, but we've got quite a few plugins on the project. So let's just see if we can load up um, the Slate plugins on Logic Pro. Let's go virtual mix rack, mono. Oh, right, that's the default window we get with Slate. So let's just leave that on there because that's loaded some stuff up for us. Thank you, Slate. Not that I really want any of that, but thank you anyway. Okay, compressors working. Let's have a nice boost at 60 hertz. Oh, yeah, you can hit, yeah. Distress, that's working. Okay, so that's that's really interesting. The Slate plugins are working fine, even though they shouldn't be, uh, in Logic Pro. So that's really, really interesting. Okay, so let's try something on the, on the output on our stereo bus. Let's go for virtual tape machines, which is always a good choice. And let's have a bit of VBC rack, because that's a great, collection of bus compressors so again they just they just loaded up so that's good uh let's have a bit of tape love let's just back that off a bit okay that's working fine and we've got no compression at the moment let's just have a tiny little bit of subtle compression like we kind of want from this So this isn't a mix or mastering masterclass, by the way. This is just me faffing around to see what works and what doesn't. Uh, this is as normal. So um, that's great. That works really, really well. So Slate works in Logic Pro. Let's load up Ozone on here and see what happens. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something I would never normally do and I'm going to use Ozone's Master Assistant. Uh, so let's play the track and let's see what that cooks up for us. Okay, it's done it. Let's accept. Now, Ozone is a fairly processor intensive piece of software anyway. The master assistant is a very sort of processor intensive thing to do because it's listening to the audio in real time. It's analyzing it and then it's telling you what it thinks you should put on it to, I don't know how their algorithm works. So I don't actually know how it works, but it's quite a processor intensive thing to do. It's they've obviously got a database of lots of different masters that they kind of average. I don't know how it works, but but and it, and it doesn't. I mean, I don't use this. Uh, watch our mastering comparison video and you'll find out why. But it can be a good starting point for, for some things. Uh, and in this case, it's actually done a pretty good job. I mean, the mix sounds to me as it did um, when I left it just a little bit louder. Let's just see what it's done. EQ, so it's given us the tiniest of, of EQ moves there. It's taken a bit of high end out, that's fair enough. It's given us a bit of mid. It's suggested maybe a bit of low end compression. Let's turn that on. Dynamic EQ, which works in conjunction with the limiter here. So that's just sucking out some kind of little peaks of horrible frequency that are, are coming up there. It's done its job. It's absolutely done its job. It's very snappy to use. It's it's working great. This is working just as well as it does on an older machine uh, for which it is designed and the older operating system for which it's designed. So that's fantastic. So well done, whoever's responsible for, <laughs> for that working. Out of interest, let's just load, shall, we, shall I put ozone on every channel? For it. Just to see what happens. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Right, we're going to put Ozone on every channel um, because it does something. It's one of those plugins that does something by default. It doesn't doesn't just sort of sit there passively after you get the maximizer and stuff like that. So let's whack it on every channel. See what happens. Wow, it's done it. It took thirty seconds for that to happen, but it's done it. Um, and I'm still, I'm still snappable. Am I snappable if, yeah. Okay, so we've got now 33 instances of Ozone, a plugin that shouldn't work, that isn't supported yet, uh, and everything's playing. It's just working. Wow, I'm impressed. So um, that's really interesting. So the two manufa different manufacturers, third party plugins we have tried today don't work in an unsupported DAW. Well, one kind of does, one doesn't work at all, but they do work inside of Apple's own Logic Pro. So that's really interesting. So I think we need to maybe delve into this uh, a bit more and for that, we need your help. So here's the plan. We had an excellent comment earlier today from Christian Bjorkender who said, just got an idea for a video series. Keeping tabs on what plugins that get the M1 Pamper treatment over the coming months and year will be a chore for sure. Why not make a little weekly update video on what plugins have grown into the new suit? I think there are tons and tons of musicians, both pro and amateur, out there who would love such a series of videos, myself included. That's a great idea, but as Christian said, a chore for sure. And we don't have licenses for every plugin in use, but you do. So if you've got or are about to get one of the new Macs with the M1 chip, you're a plugin user, and you're able to record a short weekly or bi-weekly video, and video shot on a phone will be fine, then we want to hear from you. If you use large sample libraries or an array of software instruments or even a left field DAW, we want to hear from you. Simply send us an email at the email address in the description and let us know what model Mac you have, what DAW you're using and what plugin suites you may have. And we will then assemble a crack team of suitable plugin warriors to help keep the community abreast of what works and what doesn't. And please only email us at that email address if you want to take part in this. Thank you for the idea, Christian. It's great to get you guys and girls active with our content. That's what this is all about. Let's start building a community here and keep it free and friendly for all. 
So Mark will look at the conversion in the new Mac over the next few days and compare that with the performance of interfaces at both budget, mid-level and high-end tiers. So please make sure you hit that subscribe button, ding the ding dong, and don't forget to send us an email if you would like to become one of our plugin warriors. Thanks for watching and you'll see us in the next one.